Thank you for joining this second tutorial. Um, it, this is part two where we are going to make a deep dive into PPAs. Uh, we hope that you enjoyed part one where we really covered the basics of PPAs, semi-aromatic polyamides. But today we are really going to make a deep dive. Um, if you haven't seen the first part, we really recommend you to watch that first before you step into this uh, part number two. Again, welcome. Um, in the first part, we covered what a PPA is. Um, a PPA is a polyphthalamide. Um, it's part of the polyamide family. Uh, there we also covered uh, the importance of the important uh, amide, uh, amide groups. It's a semi-aromatic polyamide. As you can see over there, again, you have the straight part, the aliphatic part, and you have the ring structure. So that is, in short, what we covered in the first part. There we also had a discussion on, okay, good, and why should we use PPAs? We did it in comparison with aliphatic polyamides, a polyamide 6-6. And there we saw that chemical resistance is one of the key properties of a PPA, a very good chemical resistance versus different type of oils, mineral oils, water glycol, different coolants. Um, it also has a very low and slow moisture absorption if you compare it again to the aliphatic polyamides. Furthermore, due to that low and slow moisture absorption, it also has a very high dimensional stability and it has very good mechanical properties, especially at elevated temperature, because typically those PPAs have a higher glass transition temperature than the aliphatic ones, the polyamide 66. Often processing and typically dealing with uh, difficult stress concentrations is seen as a drawback, but that's something that you do not see anymore in the latest generations of PPAs. So that's what we covered in the first part. But then we said we're going to make a deep dive into PPAs because you see a lot of different PPAs out there in the market. They consist of different building blocks, uh, 60, 90, um, some of them are called 60, 66. There are blends uh, with polyamide 66. You see also products like 60, DT, 60, 6i, so a lot of different ones. And today we're going to explain a little bit about what these different building blocks really are, how they contribute, and what the influence is on the mechanical properties. But why are we using all these type of different building blocks in PPAs? Well, the answer is actually relatively simple. One of the most commonly used building blocks is 60 for PPAs, but it has a very high melting temperature. It has a melting temperature of 370 degrees C. And then, of course, you have to see how to produce these type of PPAs. Normally, this is done in a melt polymerization where you have to go above the melting temperature of 60. Uh, with different type of reactions, like a polyconization reactor, you're going to build up the chains and you have to grow your polymer. But at these high temperatures, you also get degradation. So that means on one hand, you're building up your polymer, on the one hand, it's also degraded. And mostly, um, um, uh, the temperature is driving this. So that means you actually, if you want to build PPAs, you have to lower the melt temperature. And how can you lower the melt temperature? Then you have to introduce different building blocks, also often referred to as comonomers. So we have to introduce some other comonomers to actually build a polymer, because you have to do that in the melt. And also during injection molding, if you want to process the type of materials, you also want to have a little bit lower melt temperature and then you also are able to deal with your hardware. So what are these typical building blocks in PPAs? This part you already know from the first one. So we have two types of building blocks. We have the diamine on this part, the amide group, and of course your diacid, often referred to as polyamide 66. And here on your left you see the different PPAs, and you often see that they have 66 in there. So the 66 part is really the polyamide 66 as you know it. But then we go to the 60. This is also part that we have already shown you. We are going to introduce the ring structure, often referred to as the T, coming from at the raftalate. But here you see two more building blocks. And what are these building blocks? If you look, for example, to 6I, um, then we're going to change the ring structure. I'm going to do that again. Take a close look at this ring structure. This one is going to change. You see that this important group, this acid group, is moving to that direction. 
So this is not called a 6T, it's called a 6I, an isoptallic acid. So that's the 6I. We also have a different building block and that's called the DT. So in the DT you're not going to change your aromatic part, but you're going to change your aliphatic part. So let's take a look again how this is looking like. You see that you are bringing in um, a methyl group here in this part and you are going to disturb your crystallization, you are going to reduce your melt temperature. So everybody has a different solution. So this part is covering the 6T, the 6I and the DT. But of course there are some more PPAs in the market. And here you see typically the 90T, 10T and also sometimes the 4T. So what's, what's going on over there? How do these polymers differentiate? What, we, what you see here is a 4T. And uh, with this 4T, you see an aliphatic part again and a ring structure. They have the same, they have the same length. Um, that also helps in building up your crystallization. Um, it also increases uh, the arom aromatic part and that also helps in chemical resistance. If you go from a 40 to a 60, you're not going to change the aromatic part, you're actually going to change the aliphatic part. Normally here you have um, carbon atoms between those amide groups and you are going to build in more CH2. For a 19, you're even further going to introduce even more CH2. So here you see how these differentiate. So you have a 40, 60, 90, and it's the amount of carbon atoms that changes from four actually to nine. The big question is, okay, this is the chemical part of it. How is this going to influence the mechanical properties of your materials? So we're going to shortly dive into that part. Here you see again, as a reference, the polyamide 66, the aliphatic polyamide, and you see the different building blocks, the polyamide 40, 60, and 90. So what is changing? What you typically see is that the melt temperature changes. So if you look at a 90, you see melt temperatures up to around 300 degrees C. You see a glass transition temperature of around 125 degrees C. And you see an HDT of around 275 degrees C. So you can cover peak temperatures up to around 275. Those 90 materials, they are mostly known because they have relatively low moisture absorption among all the PPAs and they have a very good dimensional stability. If you then take a look at the polyamide 60, you see melt temperatures um, just above 300 degrees C, glass transition temperatures almost similar to the 90, 125 degrees C, and you see an AGT which is a little bit higher, 285 degrees C. These have good dimensional stability and good chemical resistance. If you then go to another category that is called polyamide 40, you see that the melt temperature increases a little bit to around 330 degrees C. What you also see, and that is a very important part, is that the glass transition temperature can increase to 160 degrees C, which has, of course, quite some advantages. The HDT increases up to 320 degrees C, so typically 4T PPAs can deal with higher peak temperatures. They have an excellent chemical resistance because you are able to introduce a relatively a high amount of aromatics and especially at temperatures between 100 150 degrees C these materials show an excellent excellent mechanical properties we want to illustrate that um, if you go to really humid conditions 90 is known for their low moisture absorption um, it has a very good dimensional stability and has a glass transition temperature of 125 degrees what we just covered the question is under moist conditions, these materials should work very well. They have low moisture absorption. So if you look at the strength of a material, in this case the tensile strength, and we typically looked at 100 and 150 degrees C, you see that these materials under humid conditions, they work very well, they are strong. What you would expect with a, a, a 4T, which absorbs a little bit more moisture, that also the mechanics would drop. But this is a bit in contradiction because due to the crystallization, the amount of aromatics that you are able to put in a polyamide 40, you actually see that even under humid conditions, a 40 has up to 40% higher mechanics 
at 100 or 150 degrees C. So this is, if you, if you have a certain design, this is something that you need to take care of. So this tutorial, we covered a lot about the chemistry of different PPAs, different building blocks, and also we made a translation to the mechanical properties. Um, so if you are out there and you see the different uh, PPA types, most of them are interchangeable, but you have to look for the specifics to see which material suits you best. Um, if you have further questions or need further information, we have some websites that you can take a deep dive into. Um, and you can find us on this website and even contact us. We want to thank you again for joining us in this tutorial. And as said, it will be a whole series. So we covered the first part, we covered the basics. Now we made more of a deep dive. And the next steps we go into processing and also typical applications that you can make with PPAs. Thank you for joining and hopefully see you again in next tutorial.